Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and if you've watched our videos before, you probably know that we love Premiere Pro. And we love After Effects. But we've never really done a deep dive into how these two programs are different, how they connect, and what the pros and cons are to each one of them. So today, we're going to put these two programs side by side and take a look at how you can get the most out of them for your next video project. It's After Effects versus Premiere Pro. So let's start at the very beginning. What technically are these two programs? You might think the answer is, well, they're both video editing software. And you'd be right in a broad sense, but that's actually missing out on some key details. The way Adobe describes Premiere Pro is first by labeling it as an NLE, a non-linear editor. This basically means that you have the ability to take pieces of media, video, audio, graphics, pictures, and throw them into a timeline and display them in a particular sequence to be made up into a larger overall video. A good way to think about this piece of software is that it's kind of got everything you need to create your own average video project from start to finish. If you think of a Hollywood movie, for example, it's got countless different pieces of media that all combine together to create your overall movie file. Adobe After Effects, on the other hand, is described as a digital motion graphics, visual effects, and compositing software. But we're just gonna call it compositing software for now. The purpose of this piece of software is to either take different pieces of visual media, or to create your own from scratch, and to build and merge them in such a way that they produce a new piece of footage that can be added to a larger video project. A small scale example would be creating a logo animation that you plan to use at the beginning of all of your future videos. On the other hand, a larger scale example would be to take footage that was shot on a film set and add things to it like explosions and digital creations to make it feel bigger and better than it was on its own. After Effects' job is to create specific and highly refined versions of clips to be used in the overall bigger Premiere Pro sequence. Maybe the script calls for Tom Cruise to be running on top of a building and make a big jump, but that's not exactly safe, so you gotta put wires and harnesses on to make sure that everything's okay. Removing the wire and the camera crew would be a job much better suited for After Effects. If you want just a quick and dirty way to think about it, then Premiere Pro is a blunt tool for editing your entire movie from start to finish, while After Effects is a fine detail tool, able to do incredibly amazing things for specific clips that aren't necessarily intended to just stand on their own. So that's just a basic overview, but that might not answer your question if you're wondering if a specific task is better suited for Premiere Pro or After Effects. So we're gonna take a look at some of the biggest differences between them and where some of the advantages and disadvantages lie in each. So let's start it out with number one, video tracks. Premiere Pro is a non-linear editor, and one of the things that that means is that you can put multiple pieces of media on the same video or audio track. That might not seem crazy, but consider for a second that that's not possible inside of After Effects. This seemingly small detail in Premiere Pro allows you to create highly efficient and organized sequences with very minimal effort. This is what gives Premiere Pro the ability to create an entire video or movie all inside of itself. While this is technically possible inside of After Effects, because of the limitations of one piece of media per track, this would quickly become a nightmare if you were to try to do everything inside of After Effects alone. Number two, audio editing. After Effects doesn't really have much functionality when it comes to this. I mean, you can play audio, and it will recognize when a piece of video footage has an audio file attached to it, but if you want to do more than just raise or lower the volume, you're going to find that experience frustrating. Premiere Pro, on the other hand, has powerful audio editing tools, which allow you to do everything from keyframe volume up and down, add complex effects, run denoising programs to clean it up, and much, much more. Number three, keyframe workflow. After Effects takes the cake for this one. While both programs actually allow you to work with keyframes, for things like the motion of various pieces of content, giving different acceleration and deceleration results, the options found within Premiere Pro are kind of primitive. Instead, what's found in After Effects is a simple interface, which gives you lots of space to make more fine detail changes. And then when you really need to make some customizations, it has a dedicated graph display to help you really nail the intended motion of your elements. Number four, camera tracking. Have you ever needed to add something, like a title that actually looks like it's sitting within the world of your video, locked into the environment with the rest of your footage? Well, After Effects has by default some pretty amazing planar tracking and 3D camera tracking features. This allows you to stick objects directly to areas of your scene and then further manipulate them in 3D space. It's a pretty nifty feature that we've used for quite a few different tutorials here at Motion Array. But like most things on this list, you technically can try and do it in the other piece of software. It's just not gonna be easy, fun, or fast at all. 
Premiere Pro has no tracking functionality at all beyond a simple and primitive mask tracking feature that allows you to follow basic shapes. It does work for some things, like if you have a moving subject and you want to blur out their face. But if you actually want to track something into your scene, you're either going to keyframe every single frame by hand, ew, gross, or you're going to want to go into After Effects and have it solve all of your problems for you. Number five, fast, effective timeline tools. Like we said before, Premiere Pro is more geared towards creating a project from start to finish, and After Effects is more geared towards making that one individual shot look as great as it possibly can be. So it's no surprise that Premiere Pro is filled to the brim with tools that make working with footage in time way easier. Simple things like the Slip tool, which allow you to keep the clip exactly where it is in sequence, but quickly change what portion of that clip is being displayed. Or quick keyboard shortcuts like the Ripple Delete, which allow you to rapidly tighten your edit and shift everything together to make the pacing of your video more crisp and fast. For all of its benefits, After Effects just can't work in time and sequence with nearly the same efficiency. Number six, 3D capability. We briefly touched on the 3D capabilities in the tracking section, but basically After Effects can actually allow you to work in 3D space, while Premiere Pro just really can't. The closest thing that Premiere Pro has to a 3D workspace is this effect called Basic 3D, which can basically let you tilt and swivel your elements to simulate the effects of 3D movement. But it's not really 3D. After Effects, on the other hand, has the ability to understand inputs in all three dimensions. You can move elements along the X and Y axes, and with a simple click, you can up that to the Z axis as well. Number seven, Multicam. For this one, we have to give a big point to Premiere Pro. Working with Multicam is a huge necessity for the kinds of creators who do things like weddings and event videography, where there's two or more cameras who are filming at the exact same time just from different angles. Premiere Pro allows you to set up your sequence in such a way that you can actually see all of the different angles in real time and choose which one is active on the fly. Kind of like being the director of a live television broadcast. After Effects simply doesn't have anything that really compares to this at all. Number eight, digital alteration. After Effects takes a big swing here by flexing its ability to literally change your footage. You remember the Tom Cruise clip that we showed before? You might not realize this, but After Effects actually has some really powerful built-in effects like wire removal. And for the more detail-oriented job, After Effects can digitally manipulate the background with tools like the clone stamp. With it, you can actually change what the pixels of your project look like, which is a little bit more than you can save for Premiere Pro. Number nine, advanced masking. So both Premiere Pro and After Effects can do what's called masking, making a selection and telling the program to either include or exclude everything inside of that section. But some Premiere Pro users might know what I mean when I say, the tighter you try to mask with more points around your subject, the harder it gets to make everything feel perfect. Bottom line, it's not nearly as forgiving as After Effects in this respect. After Effects has a variety of workflow designs that help you to ensure that your masking is easy to create, easy to manipulate, and actually gives you a wider range of ways to use it once it's said and done. If you need to rotoscope your entire subject over the course of a five second clip, wow, please use After Effects instead. And number 10, expressions and scripts. This last one is pretty much a slam dunk for After Effects. If we're asking which program has the ability to do pretty much everything, it's After Effects. And maybe nothing expresses this quite as well as, well, expressions. Basically what After Effects can allow you to do is literally write commands for your particular layer and elements to follow. Wanna add some camera shake to your scene? Write out a wiggle expression and dial in its values to get just the right amount you're looking for. Or maybe you have an artificial light source and you just want it to have that convincing flicker. Or, oh, wow, um, oh, okay, I didn't even, what? So with the seemingly infinite amount of possibilities you have to literally write out commands, there's one small downside. If you don't have somebody to walk you through the process of what it all means and how to actually write it all out and what does what and yada, 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 it can get really overwhelming really quickly. So you can see that the infinite opportunity of After Effects actually comes with the downside of a really steep learning curve. And on the flip side, Premiere Pro can't do as many highly specialized tasks but it's a lot more user friendly. So that's been my list of 10 major differences between Premiere Pro and After Effects and how some of their pros and cons are shown through them. But did you know that one of the biggest benefits of each of these two programs isn't what each of them has individually, but the fact that they work together through what's known as dynamic linking. Dynamic linking basically allows these two programs to talk to each other. And this is kind of the main way that you'd see it working. You can be creating a particular part of your Premiere Pro project and realize I need to make some changes here that Premiere Pro isn't really the best at doing. I need the help of After Effects. 
So you highlight all the pieces of footage in question, right click, and choose Replace with After Effects Composition. This literally opens up what you've just selected inside of After Effects, and you can make the necessary changes with the new program. Once you're done, your new changes will actually show up back in your Premiere Pro project in real time, because your clips have been replaced with the After Effects sequence that you've just been working on. Depending on its complexity, you might have to do a little bit of a render to actually see the work that you've just put in. But once you do, you can see that it's actually a part of your Premiere Pro project now. The same goes for the reverse as well. If you start working in After Effects and then want to export that into Premiere Pro, all you have to do is drag and drop the After Effects file into Premiere Pro. Now you can use it just like any other piece of footage. But that isn't the only way that you can use this sort of connection point between these two programs. Imagine creating a title animation or graphic in After Effects, and then after using that in your Premiere Pro project, being able to customize it and make those changes in Premiere Pro, without needing After Effects again at all. Well, you're in luck because these are called Motion Graphics Templates, or MoGart for short. Basically, you can create your own custom project just like you otherwise normally would, but instead of just rendering it out or dynamically linking it, you can create a Motion Graphics Template from it and duplicate what elements of it you want to be customizable at a later date color, opacity, motion, and then when you export it as a motion graphics template, you can place it into your Premiere Pro project and make edits on the fly. If you're interested in grabbing some motion graphics templates, we have tons here at motionarray.com, and I've linked below to some that you can check out for yourself. Okay, so after all of that, what does this really boil down to? These programs are each insanely good at what they do, and they can work together pretty effectively, so that you can have all of your workflow nicely packaged into a dynamically linked bundle. But if you only have the money to spend monthly on one, or if you're still trying to figure out what your content creation niche needs, then here's the take home. If you're creating a lot of general video projects with multiple shots and scenes that don't require a lot of digital manipulation, then Premiere Pro is your best friend. However, if on the other hand, you're venturing into the realm of motion graphics, 3D manipulation, camera tracking, or really any other project where you're making one really cool piece of a much larger puzzle, then After Effects is your go-to game. But just remember that these two programs are not mutually exclusive. They're designed to do two very separate things, but also to talk to each other, so that the process of making your awesome video project is a lot easier. And guys, that's been our very lengthy, but hopefully very helpful explanation of the differences between Premiere Pro and After Effects. I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, as always, we have tons of other tutorials right here at motionarray.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.